Let's right. talk about the uh, Trevon Martin case and what's going on in Florida. Well, right I now. have a different take, uh, Brian, on that. I, I believe that George Zimmerman, the overzealous. Watch captain should be investigated to the fullest extent of the law, and if he is criminally liable, he should be prosecuted. But I am urging the parents of black and Latino youngsters, particularly, to not let their children go out wearing hoodies. I think the hoodie is as much responsible for Trayvon Martin's death as George Zimmerman was. What, what do you mean? Instant you, association. Uh -oh. It's those, Juliet, when you see a kid walking down the street, particularly a, a dark-skinned kid like my son Cruz, who I constantly yelled at when he was going out wearing a damn hoodie or those pants around his ankles, take that hood off. People look at you and they watch. What's the instant identification? What's the instant association? Uh -oh. It's those crime scene surveillance yeah. tapes. Every time you see someone sticking up a 7-Eleven, the kid's wearing a hoodie. Every time you see a mugging on a surveillance camera or they get the old lady in the alcove, it's a kid wearing a hoodie. You have to recognize that this whole stylizing yourself as a gangster, you're going to be a gangster wannabe. Well, people are going to perceive you as a menace. When That's you see a black or Latino youngster particularly on the street, you walk to the other side of the street, you try right. to avoid that confrontation, but I'll bet you money, if he didn't have that hoodie on, that, uh, that nutty neighborhood watch guy wouldn't have responded in that violent right. and aggressive way. What about yeah. Yeah. Yo, wow. That was, you know, you know, it's, it, I'm glad it's just natural, you know, it, you know, number one, it wouldn't matter what he was wearing. You know, I could walk around looking like Sherlock Holmes, you know, you know, the whole top hat, the whole nine, with, you know, and still walking down 86th Street or any gated community for that matter, and you know, just because of maybe perhaps the skin tone that could be a problem. You know, I'm not being, I'm not just trying to use race as the only card I have to use, but it is about 50 to 60 or 80 percent of the reason why I would have been in some serious trouble. Doesn't matter how good I look, you know, they're still walking me with a flashlight, they're still, you know, you know, think twice or even if I'm, you know, whatever, doesn't matter. You know, they can just say, Oh, it's just one in disguise, you know, it, it wouldn't matter. Even right now, you know, I went to a store and like I was with my cousin and she's Hispanic and we're just walking and this this woman is just following us around the store. Like it was probably, you know, it's like you think we gotta steal something? Do we look that suspicious that we're going to steal something out of the store? It's the same thing as the Trayvon. It's, and the hoodie has nothing to do with it. He, he could have been wearing a suit and probably still look okay. suspicious to you, them. You've got these, first of all, if you look at all these Hollister, they show all these Hollister pictures and stuff like that. Most white kids advertise Hollister. Straight up. You don't see that many. There are some. I don't shop there. I've never bought anything from that store. I don't even walk in that store. So yeah, so I mean, maybe you guys do that shit thing, fine, whatever, for that matter. But, you know, like I said, you go down Soho, you see these huge 300 or 100 foot, 200 whatever size uh, pictures of most white kids sitting around the hoodies looking cool or whatever the case would be. There's a big flat Hollister right across their shirt. And you know what I mean? And that's the thing, that's cool. They're in the pool, and it's Hollister and whatever, whatever. I'll walk down, I'll walk down Soho, any part of Soho, any part of 86, 23rd, 14. 72nd in, in, in Park Avenue. You just see, you know what I mean? Just walking around with all types of things. You got a lot of kids with, uh, it says CUNY right there in the front hoodie. And that looks like a CUNY uh, hoodie. You know, it does look. Just the distance, it looks like a CUNY hoodie. You see them rocking at 24-7. But what Ferraro said about hoodies, that it's Hats. 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 That, that was. That was nonsense. It was a little unnecessary. It was an unethical hoodie. I mean, and it's just the ignorance that just goes on. This is all, I think all this is just, I hate to say this, but the majority of this new stuff, that's why a lot of people don't watch it, because it's just all distracting. There's really more serious issues happening right now in the world that needs to be addressed, that we really need to understand, that have the un uh, under uh, understanding of the undertone, the sharp undertone that's happening, but yet we're still being duped and brainwashed by the stupidity. You know, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to respect his death, no. It's just the, the stupidity of, Oh man, a black kid died in a hoodie, rise up, you know, no, come on, you gotta be kidding me, you know, they, there's, there's laws against black people, or people of color, you know, everybody, there's laws against us in this room right now that we don't even know about, you know, okay, the Patriot Act was signed not too long ago, so we gotta be careful, allegedly, we have to be careful what we say. You are watching the youth channel, take a couple of minutes to watch one of our PSAs.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Stay tuned and watch our featured programming. This stuff is ridiculous, you know. This stuff is it's been happening for a thousand years, you know. This happened hundreds of years, you know. This is just another what's his name, uh, Emmett Till, another one, you know. He, they know about the whistle at, but it's just a simple fact that he was just putting on suspect black, what's going on, you know, what you do in our neighborhood, you know. This stuff has happened for hundreds of years, hundreds of years, you know. And it's just the only reason it's just a big deal that I guess now is recorded. Now we have the technology to see. And, and it's bugged out. It's bugged out how only one community, uh, or a certain gated community, had its own rules. You don't hear, you don't hear, uh, you know, other, you know, alleged minorities. You don't hear them. Oh, this is our neighborhood, and this is our rules, and you know, you know, we stand. You know, we uh, what's the word? We have the right to bear arms in this community, in this um, uh, radius. You know what I mean? So that means people from 86th Street to 72nd, or 86th Street to maybe 80th Street has their own laws, as opposed to people living from, I don't know, 96th down. I don't think he realized that he was disrespecting himself. When he was talking about if you see a Hispanic or a black person, they look suspicious, you go across the street, that's the first instinct. He really is talking about himself, that you're saying that Latin culture, if they look suspicious, what if you look suspicious one day? I'm gonna walk across the street because you were walking with a honey suit. And he act like he gonna wear a suit every single day so it's way more professional than every other Hispanic and black person. It's like he's degrading. I don't. Okay, let me see. It's just, uh, for us to uh, you know, keep the hoodie at home. Make no sense whatsoever. Please. I, I don't have to, I don't have to stop wearing what I'm wearing for any circumstances. I want to walk out here with this big old blue alleged, of course, black folks with this color is a problem. But I, if I, I can want to wear a big blue hoodie with a nice scarf around my neck and a nice blue fitted, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Sure, like, it's advertised, you know, it makes money. Kids, uh, you know, if I was at a skateboard with this on, you know what I mean, with some skinny jeans, or if I was a little, you know, skinny and a little boy. With this one, you know, it wouldn't have been a problem. It wouldn't have been a problem. I'm just skate. I'm, I'm, I'm hip. I'm MTV. But I'm, I'm just, you know, extra baggy. You know, extra low. You know, extra big. It's a problem. It's, you know, it's all. Oh, it's black now. Now it's a problem. It's, it's BET now. It's not MTV anymore. It's not. It's not dude. It's not TV anymore. No, no, it's a problem. No, I'm gonna wear it. But I wanna wear it. I'm gonna buy this. And I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna wear it this way. And, you know, it was designed to be worn over your head. And it's designed to be worn. What if I, uh, me personally, I go to the gym a lot. You know, well, now I'm finally starting to go back to the gym. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted to go to the gym and I want to sweat extra, what I'm going to wear? A hoodie. <laughs> right. When I get on that treadmill, I'm going to wear a hoodie. So on my way to the gym, I can wear a hoodie. At any type of weather. It can be 90 degrees, I still wear a hoodie on my way to the gym. I want to sweat while I'm going to the gym. You know what I mean? You know, I can be a nice white hoodie, you know, still. I, I'm going to, you know what I mean? There's no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to wear whatever I feel like. There is a percentage of those who make it hard for us, everybody, to do this. I mean, you know, to wear this kind of stuff, they make it hard for us. If it was meant to, this scarf was meant, you know, to be around my neck for when it's cold. And it's cold in here, it's cold in the studio. It is cold in here for me. I don't know each other. I'm cold. So I'm gonna wear this scarf, but I'm not gonna walk outside, even though it is, you know, March and it's still cold, but, you know, it's, you know, I'm not gonna wear this scarf around my pants. I'm not gonna hang it on the left side of, you know, any kind of. Boys in my school, or the school above us, and they do the same thing as my black friends and my Hispanic friends. But you know, they don't talk about them. They leave it alone. But aren't they the same? They dress in the same way. Why are these two people being judged when this one's doing the exact same thing? It's like special treatment in some kind of. It's not fair. That that's the way it really comes to. It's not fair. Understand it. It's too black and it's not too, you know, it's, okay. you know, it's not too much of that that it's okay. It's, it's, it's a pass. I mean, it's it's not fair, you know. I, I'll be damned if I walk through any, you know, community and, you know, I gotta I gotta think twice, you know. I gotta put on my shoes, make sure my hair is brushed. I gotta make sure, you know, I'm standing up right, make sure my breath's feeling good. I gotta do, you know what I mean? I gotta, no, I don't have to come, no, I'm not, I'm not living in that. I'm not living my life that kind of way. No, they can, they can walk out. It can walk out, you know, and strut, do its own thing. You know, it's a, it's a statement when they walk out, but it's a problem when I walk out, when we walk out. It, you know, it's, it's a problem. It's just this, you know, we're not meant to just move. We just gotta, you know, stay in this one place and die. That's it.
It serves your purpose in life. Like a caste system. Mm -hmm. like caste system. system. What is that? It's like a, it's like one of those like religious status where yeah. you go from. And you just um, stay in where you're supposed it's, to. It's like one of those. It was supposed to relate to a Hindu religion. Yeah, thing. like um, my my economics teacher, she was talking about um, forgotten country, but um, there's untouchables. Now you could be in your country and be an untouchable, which means like you can't marry outside being an untouchable. You got married in another one. Mm. That that's your caste. So you're not popular at all. And then if you come over here and you're very successful, no matter what, when you go back, you're still untouchable. Right. So it's like with us, if they see us as ghetto, they always gonna see us as ghetto, even if we make more money than them. I mean, just because no. you know. I mean, in relating to it, I heard that uh, like a story last year um, related to this, uh, saying that in the morning we see like people above the uh, untouchables, like you know, walk roaming around in daylight and. Not in nighttime, we see the untouchables walking around with like brooms and backrooms, saying that showing with brooms and backrooms, showing that where they went, like leaving a trail behind of where they were up last night. Mm -hmm. So that shows that there's been like a separation against the like, two two groups of people, the, the untouchables and people above. So the question is, how do we live? How do we live? How how are we supposed to live? How are we supposed to dress? How are we supposed to eat? How are we supposed We're to supposed to do how? whatever we want? Really? I mean, it's, what, it's how, it's how it's we how breathe, we it's what we choose, it's, you know, as she said. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a way of living, not everyone is the same. Not everyone is the same how we live. Mm -hmm. So, you can wear a cap anytime, I can wear a hoodie anytime. Um, you, you can wear that scarf anytime, she can wear that hoodie too, you can wear a t-shirt too. Anyone has their way of living. Mm -hmm. So, no There's one's... There's no has, specific but, guideline but how we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. I'm saying no, I'm not going to interrupt you, I'm just saying, so it has to be to an extent, meaning, you okay, you can wear what you want, you can do what you want, not in this, I mean, you gotta commute, then fine, you gotta go here to hang out, and then you gotta hurry up and come back home before 8 o'clock, because that's the gated community, I mean, yes, the gated community is safe, it's controlled, I can raise children, I don't have to worry about them getting beat up, and robbed, and raped, and But that can even happen in your own gated community, yeah, yeah, just yeah. because it's gated and it's protected from the outside, still doesn't mean that it's protected or even safe in the inside. True. You are watching the youth channel. Take a couple of minutes to watch one of our PSAs. But you should not be punching people because they are gay. Those are their preference. There's something else going on? My brother's... My brother's gay. Oh, your brother's gay. And, and, and so if your brother's gay, why can you show some sympathy with someone? I don't get their choices. Okay. But we have has no swag! swag. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Stay tuned and watch our featured programming. Speaker Gingrich, you recently said black Americans should demand jobs, not food stamps. You also said poor kids lack a strong work ethic and propose having to work as janitors in their schools. Can't you see that this is viewed at a minimum as insulting to all Americans, but particularly to black Americans? No, I don't see that. I mean, it's fascinating because Joe Klein reminded me that this started with an article he wrote 20 years ago. 
New York City pays their janitors an absurd amount of money because of the union. You could take one janitor and hire 37 kids to work in the school for the price of one janitor, and those 30 kids would be a lot less likely to drop out of grade. They'd be getting money, which is a good thing if you're poor. All the elites despise earning money. Luke Gingrich on video. I think he's dumb. He didn't make any sense. He didn't make any sense. When he was talking about like janitors, like is he saying that for kids, like that's the only kind of job that they're able to get at 13 years old? That's not like the only job they could get, like janitor work. Like is that like the lowest thing he thinks that? Or, and why it gotta be poor people? Why can't it just be regular middle class children that want to make their own money? Like, he didn't mention about black people during the whole statement about kids should work as a um, custodian so they can earn extra money to stack together. And knowingly, he, he, knowingly in his mind, he's probably talking about black people or something like that. You know? uh, I guess to get, um, that's the debate referee. I think he, like, like throughout his whole statement, I think he kind of felt resentful of, of what he just said. I think he held himself very professionally. I did, yeah. Because I feel like if there was someone else up there, he, they would have snapped and like, put him in his place. Mm -hmm. He, he, like, you could see it, like, in his face expression, like, was, he, he was, was just, just he was, like, mad and really irritated. About the whole discussion, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't make any sense. Maybe he didn't talk about, he wants us to be more ambitious and not rely on food stamps, but sometimes that's people's only option. Like, why is that the only option of employment? Exactly, there's other big and higher jobs, job ranks out there that we can choose choose from. Why? He wants to choose like the lowest form. Yeah, gender work is considered like, you know, it's something that's... I mean, easy. custodians still get paid like a good amount of money, but... It's like, not considered like a top position. Right, in, this, like in, in today's society, society right. Like being a peasant, or being poor, and being a custodian, consider you consider like a uh, you know low class person. I think he's trying to imply that poor people are only able to get those kind of jobs. You are watching the youth channel. Take a couple of minutes to watch one of our PSAs. Oh, there's money out here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Stay tuned and watch our featured programming. I think, like to me, we still live in the caste system, even though they kind of abolished it, mm -hmm. like, thousands of years ago. It's not strict here in America as in, like, strict in India or something. Exactly. Like, today, we still got the caste system. So we don't really enforce it that way. But it's like, it kind of seems enforced secretively when they try to push poor people to get like Medicaid. Medicaid, right? Yeah, and like trying to prevent them from getting food stamps. What if that is their only option? And he's probably judging them that only black people get food stamps because they're poor. Right. Not all black people are poor. There's some people, black people who are, who are richer than him or 
Exactly. Like the black guy that ran for president, Herman Cain. Yeah, yeah. He had a lot of money. Yeah, he had a lot of money. Herman Cain had a lot of money. He was in poor. Yeah. So. I mean, he, he owned his own pieces. Oh, restaurant, for God's sake. What's it called? Grandfather's Pizza? Godfather. Oh, Godfather. I want to take a second and kind of break into that. Youth media, what is that? So I have Patrick Foreman, and um, he is now a camera person. He is, um, you know, an ex Harlem 411 board person. Still and um, he's from Manhattan Neighborhood Network, and he has a whole team of people in here with him. They have the cameras in here today. Um, Hi, Patrick. Yes, hello. Good afternoon. Good evening. Yeah, it's welcome back to you. Harlem 411. Yes, it feels good to be back. How does it feel to be on the other end and not over here, like, playing music yes. that might have profanity or messing up or making crazy faces? It, How feels, do you... it feels weird. Like, it feels good. And since I guess it feels weird, this is like my first time actually, right, being behind the mic since I was, like, 13, 14. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's... And, um... Now they are they're working in media. Watch out, Haja. They're working in media and they're uh, doing the cameras. They're doing editing. You know, they ha they're training other people. And we wanted to have them come on because this is this is what this is what what it's all about. It's you know it's great when we can sit around and talk about okay, well this is happening or you know we need to you know talk about Trayvon or all of the things that are happening. But when the youth are actually making the moves and the youth are standing in the studio with the cameras and you know doing all these things mm -hmm. then that's really when we actually see our work we actually see things manifested and that's really what it's about mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit about what you do at Manhattan Neighborhood Network well again my name is Patrick Farman 22 years old um, Harlemite um, basically uh, at the Youth Channel, I've been, uh, again, the Youth Channel is a division of Manhattan Neighborhood Network, which is a public access, uh, st public access uh, station, mm -hmm. um, film, film studio, right. more or less. And, um, you know, Manhattan, Manhattan, Manhattan has been around since the 80s, and the uh, Youth Channel, uh, we at the Youth Channel started around the year 2000. Um, pretty much our goal, uh, more or less, our goal, more or less, is to have more youth involved ages primarily ages 14 to 25, um, college age, to pretty much have a hands-on, a full, in-depth, hands-on feel, a hands-on experience on just, you know, to be behind the scenes and also a producer of the media, of what they see, of what they feel, what they know, what they mm -hmm. like, you know, rather than to be just a consumer. Because tell us what editing is. Because, you know, when you do, mm -hmm. when you watch commercials, mm -hmm. it's all edited. You know, like somebody could make something look a certain way mm -hmm. just because of the editor. Right. So tell us about the control that the editor has. Right. That that control the editor has is pretty powerful in a sense. Um, you know, that, that editor, in my eyes, that editor just pretty much calls the shots almost. Almost. Now, that's crazy because... You're talking about these things that a lot of people don't even have ex have uh, exposure to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're talking about the, the mic and the filming and that is like so regular. That sounds like that's like something that you talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of young people and for a lot of adults, that's not something that they get a chance to do on a regular basis. You don't even have access to that type of equipment. And then the editing, tell us a little bit about that because mm -hmm. when you learn how to edit, then all of a sudden now you create what people see. You're being told what to do. You're being you're being mm. forced like a machine mm. or program like a computer. Like you have to shoot this. Mm -hmm. for Jersey Shore, Jersey Shore, for example. I would never want to shoot something like that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want that on my resume. I'm not gonna sit here and be a part. Even though I'm just a cameraman, whatever the case may be, director, whatever. I don't want to be a part of something stereotypical. I don't want to be a part of something negative. So um, media means a lot to me. I mean, I got involved with media at the age of 12. Um, Manhattan Neighborhood Network, I was working there, and um, I think it gave me a lot of opportunities. It was an alternative for me to not get into trouble or to do other things. I mean, I wasn't really that talented in playing sports, 
like basketball, football. So I guess this is kind of like my my own personal thing that I yeah. like doing, a hobby, something. It gave I like you to an pursue. option. Exactly. Mm. Well, I just want people to just be mindful, just what you were discussing. Just be mindful of what you're watching and why you're watching it and why are we being portrayed in these certain stereotypes. To just be aware. Right. Mostly be aware of what you're watching. Analyze things. Question things. I think the best way to, to do, to be a philosopher, be an individual that questions things. Don't always accept things because not everything that you accept is actually true. Well, if I had a chance to make a show, I would make a show like um, a sitcom, sort of. It would be about people that deal with different issues, like primarily youth that deal with issues with their parents. It would have like six different, you know, youth that have d six different parents. Like, that would be my primary goal, to try to show people that just because you may be a different race, everybody experiences different things with their parents and everybody could, could relate to it.